Hi, I'm Shu, and you're watching... Tree Rolling One! Damn out! Referee Rolling Ones! I don't think you have to take the God-specific battalions as allies! I disagree, Rolling Ones. Here you are, Mizia. Three rolling ones. Back in my day, they were called orcs. Retiree rolling ones. Uh... Re rolling puns. Hey everybody, this is Brent. Shu and I are playing a very special game today. The first battle report we ever did on the channel was Warherd vs. Magakin of Nurgle. We're going to be recreating most of that battle today, now that Warherd has been upgraded to Beasts of Chaos and they have a shiny new battle tome. And I'm going to be taking just about the same army that I did in our very first video. So here's my Magakin of Nurgle army. Let's start with the General, who is going to be a Harbinger of Decay. He's going to have Hideous Visage for his command trait. He's going to have the Wither Stav as his magical artifact. We have the Glotkin, who is going to be taking Plague Squall as his spell. He's also going to have access to uh, Vile Regenesis. And here's a Plague Priest with a Plague Sensor. And I've got two units of Putrid Blight Kings. They all have Blight Lords, Icon Bearers, and Sonorous Toxins. That's going to be 980 points of Maggot Kin of Nurgle. Hello, Internet. This is Shu, and this is my Beast of Chaos army, formerly known as War Herd. Up here we have the red Bulgore, armed with the uh, Bulgore Great Axes. Over here we have the brown Bulgore, with more Bulgore Great Axes. And these are both battle line here. Here we have a great Bray Shaman. Um, he's a modest Bray Shaman, to be honest. Over here we have the Wildfire Taurus, which is an, a new endless spell for the Beast of Chaos. Back here we have our garden variety Gorgon, the Herd Stone, which now belongs to me, and this uh, another group of <laughs> another group of Bulgore with Bulgore Great Axes. For my general, I have a Doom Bull, and my Doom Bull is going to be part of the Dark Walkers Great Fray. Great Fray. So I guess the whole army is constituted as part of Dark, Dark Walkers Great Fray. And because of that, I have to take some specific artifacts and command abilities. Um, and this allows me access to the Dark Walker's special ability, and I'll explain that in a second. The artifact I'm taking for my general is called the Desolate Shard, and allows me to pick a spot in the battlefield within three inches of a terrain feature, and then, or excuse me, pick a terrain feature, and then pick models that are close by and damage them with mortal wounds. And then also, I've got a command ability, which allows me to remove a unit from the battlefield and set it up again somewhere else, like, an, uh, like a mid-game ambush if I need to. So, that's, both of those are pretty cool abilities. The lore of my army is that I'm from the realm of Hish. H-Y-S-H. Hyish? Hish? Hish? Hish. So, uh, I think that's where our game's going to take place. Is that right, Brett? Absolutely. Yes, we're playing in the realm of Hish, in a forest. Because all the biomes are re represented in all those realms. Let's see what happens. Also, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we do have a spell from the lore of the Twisted Wilds for my uh, <laughs> my, my Great Bray Shaman's ability. I'm taking um, a s Savage Dominion, which allows me to potentially take control of the Glocken in a very slight and subtle way. Um, we'll see if that happens. It's hard to roll over his bravery, but I'm ready for comedy. And finally, as part of the Dark Walker's uh, Great Prey, my uh, General's command trait is that he allows uh, plus one to run rolls for friendly Dark Walker's units within 12 inches of the General. It's time to roll to see which Realmscape feature we're going to have in Hish. A one uh -oh. Gleaming Vista. The Realmscape feature has no effects on the battlefield. How exciting. I'm going to go ahead and place a Feculent Narlmaw right here. We're going to be playing a scenario from the Beasts of Chaos Battle Tomb called Blood Swamp today. So in the realm of Hish, there is a swamp of cloying mists that the Beasts of Chaos have taken over. And Nurgle thinks that 
that sounds like a pretty great place to live, so they're going to take it from him. I'm not going to explain every rule in this scenario. The, uh, in summary, the Bees of Chaos are going to be defending their herdstone and trying to wipe out the invaders who are trying to desecrate the herdstone. There's a lot of fun ambush rules, and we will go over those rules as they come up in the game. But first, uh, I have to deploy my army first as the invaders. I need to roll for every unit to see whether or not they're going to show up as reserves. Brent, you have a rule here. Yeah, we don't want to get lost in the swamp here. Let's roll for the Harbinger of Decay, who is definitely lost in the swamp. <laughs> these, uh, uh, these Blight Kings are also Darn lost it. in the swamp. The Glockkin is not lost in the swamp. The Plague Priest is lost, lost in the swamp. <laughs> and these Blight Kings, uh, they're going to hang out with the Glockkin on the table. I'm going to go ahead and set these up. Taking a look at this battlefield... Here's what's left of my army set up on the board. Everybody else is lost in the swamp. And they're right next to some sinister terrain. And here's some deadly terrain. And some more deadly terrain. Moving this way. Moving. Oh, the puns are already beginning. Here is more sinister terrain. A mystical building. And then here's the herdstone protected by the Gorgon, the Doom Bull, and the Great Bray Shaman. So all three units of Bulgors per the... Dark Walker's Legion's ability can set up an ambush just like Bray Herd. So they are creeping in the shadows somewhere else and they will arrive later. I set up my army first, so I get to choose who's going to take the first battle round. I'll go ahead and do that. It's time for Nurgle's coolest allegiance ability, the Cycle of Corruption. Now that the battle is starting, I need to roll a dice and see where we start. It's going to be a three. The burgeoning. That's going to be roll of dice for each unit within one inch of a terrain feature at the start of your hero phase. On a roll of five or more, that unit suffers a mortal wound. Nurgle units heal one wound instead. We're going to have to see how close to the herdstone the uh -oh. word are. And from the burgeoning, I have to hurt my heroes. What happens? I want to hurt them. So for the Gorgon, on a five up, he takes a mortal wound. He does not. The Great Bray Shaman Ooh. does not. And the Doom Bowl. Ooh, so uh -huh. the... Beasts of Chaos Magic have has uh, repelled Nurgle's Rot from their sacred herdstone. It's our swamp! Get out of our swamp! Tell me about your contagion points. Yeah, for my Summon Demons of Nurgle Allegiance ability, I have a Nurgle unit in my territory, so that's going to give me three contagion points. I'm going to get another contagion point, since there are no enemy units in this territory, and an extra D3 for this Feculent Narwma on the table that has no enemy units close to it. So I'm going to go ahead and get seven uh, Contagion points, turn one. Nurgle's favorite number. The Triumph, Brent. Yeah, I've got 980 points, she's got 1,000. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up Bloodthirsty once per battle when a friendly unit is selected to shoot or fight. You can say that it is Bloodthirsty. If you do so, reroll failed wound rolls for the unit until the end of the phase. Ooh. Talk me through your spells. So Glotkin, he can cast two spells thanks to Aetherite Glot up here. First he's going to attempt Foul Regenesis, which is cast on a seven. I'm going to go ahead and get that. Are you within 30 inches? It's probably pretty far, but let's find out. Just to be certain, I am outside of unbinding range. So I'm going to go ahead and get Foul Regenesis, and I'm going to move the wheel back to number one. So I can go to Unnatural Vitality, add two to the move characteristic of all Nurgle units. That will help me in the coming uh, movement phase. And spell. Plague Squall. So this is also cast on a 7. And if I get this, this is fully making use of the spell because it has no range. Just enemy units that are uh, in line of sight. So that's going to be the Doombull and the Gorgon. Should I cast this? Which I do not. Command point. I've built up one. I'm going to save it for later. Magakin of Nurgle, movement phase. The Glockin typically has a movement of 8. But after a natural vitality, he's adding plus two to his moves. He's going to go movement 10, and he's going to run for 13 inches. Just try and get closer to this herdstone to throw it off a cliff. The Blight Kings are going to try and keep up. So they normally have a movement of four, so that's up to six after a natural vitality. They're going to run as well, and they get plus one to their run roll from their sonorous toxins. So that's going to be six plus five. They're going to be moving 11 inches trying to keep pace with the big dude. Zippy Fast Nurgle. So first thing here, 
lost in the swamp. Now that we're at the end of the movement phase, these units that are trapped in the swamp, I need to try and bring them onto the board on a four or a five. They can be set up on the battlefield anywhere that is fully within six inches of the invader's short table edge. That's me. And more than nine from the enemy. On a six, they can be set up anywhere that is wholly within six inches of the invader's long table edge and more than nine inches from enemy units. So let's see where he shows up. He does not show up. The Plague Priest also is going to uh, take time out. And the Blight Kings, hey, they're going to be set up uh, on... Let me go put them up right now. So at the end of my movement phase here, I have placed this unit of five Blight Kings right here. That they have arrived from the swamp. And I've set up a new Feculent Marl Narmaw over there. I've spent all seven of my Contagion points and set up a Feculent Narmaw within 12 inches of a friendly Nurgle hero and more than one inch away from any scenery. So that's going to conclude how you can have Nurgle turn one. Okay, for the Warherd Beast of Chaos hero <laughs> phase, I'm going to bank my command ability point, uh, my command point, and cast a spell in addition. I'm going to cast the Wildfire Taurus on casting value six. It's going to happen on a six. Ooh. You can unbind. Yeah, let's see. 30. The, the Glockin is within 30, isn't he? Uh, that's 25. 28 to 9. 30. Yeah, right to Ethrock's head. Sure. Well, let's give that a try so he doesn't take a cow train to the face. He's going to go ahead and stop that. That bullet not happening. Not happening. Not yet. Look. Twinsies. Okay. Going into the Warherd... Uh, Beast of Chaos movement phase. Gorgon movement. He's going to go 8 inches. Actually, let's run him. What do you want to run? He's going to go another tree. And the Doom Bolt's also going to run. He's going to get 7, 10 total. And my Bray Shaman has Bestial Vigor, so he can run and move up to 9 inches. And he's not gonna. He's gonna hang out right where he is. Mm. All right. My uh, these two units, these two units of uh, Bulgor have ambushed onto the field, six inches from my table edge, um, or within six inches. And the other two, or the other three, are off the table still because of my Dark Walker Allegiance ability, allowing me to ambush on turn two. So is that going to be the end of Beast of Chaos turn one? That's going to conclude my movement phase. Time for some robot dice roll off. I'm gonna go ahead and break ties since I took the first battle round. Ooh. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm gonna take it. War hurt, turn two. Beast of Chaos. So now we're doing Beast of Chaos, turn two. I'm gonna mention this cloying miss rule for the Blood Swamp scenario. I was definitely a dirty cheater last turn. Good thing I didn't cast Plague Squall successfully because right now all spells and missiles are reduced to a 12 inch range, but that can change if at the uh, start of a new battle round, you can roll under <coughs> the current battle round. So, shoot, roll a one so all my spells are, are, are good again. Nope. No, so the Cloying Mists are going to continue. Beasts of Chaos. Okay, Beasts of Chaos. I'm going to bank my command ability point, my command point. I'm going to bank my primordial call point and not summon anything because I can, cannot summon anything with two points anyways. And then I'm going to uh, use the... I'm trying to summon that spell, the Wildfire Taurus again. It's going to be casted on six. Mm. Seven. It's going to be trickier to beat, but can the Glockin <laughs> shut it down? No. No, he cannot. So go Here ahead comes. and set up the Wildfire Taurus. The Wildfire Taurus is set up here. It is going to move 12 inches. Move! Can I mention how cool it is that he's emerging from a burning building? <laughs> it's it's from the Balefire, man. That's how it works. I guess so. All right, we're going to put him right onto this piece of terrain. Right here. Uh, he's pretty good at blocking the way. Pretty big model. Uh, <laughs> maybe something we, uh, we hadn't anticipated. Or at least I certainly did, putting the clock in between a bunch of trees. We are going to... Um, just move the Gorgon up, because I don't think, um, well, I'm going to have to get charged, I think, in order to make this work. And we're going to move the Doom Bull up his seven. Uh, see if we can get into some combat next turn, or this turn, maybe, if you charge in. These guys back here are going to run. They're going to run six, and these guys are going to run five, and I'll show you where they end up. 
Okay, these uh, the brown team <laughs> moved up from here to here. The blue team moved from here to there. And these dark walking red team Bulgore came onto the table on my table, uh, one of my table edges on the end of my second turn's movement phase. Caught in a miraculous charge uh, with an 11. Do not get it. <laughs> Want to tell me about the Magikin hero phase? Well, first, we rolled some de deadly terrain stuff off camera for the, both the Gorgon and the uh, Glockin, and they're both fine. Yeah, we need to remember that. This whole entire hill uh, is going to be deadly terrain. So first, also a little bit back up at the start of the battle round, I'm supposed to now move to number two, Fecund Vigor. Add one to all wound rolls attacks made for attacks made by neural units in the combat phase. I'm now going to generate more contagion points. I'm only getting a D3 for each Fecula Narma. I don't have any neural units in my deployment zone anymore because I'm a fool and I wanted a couple extra inches. So let's see what I get here. So I'm going to generate five contagion points this turn. Moving on to the Glock, and he's going to try and uh, he's going to try and dispel the uh, Wildfire Taurus. So I need to beat its casting value of six. I'm going to have to roll a seven here. Easy. I do, so I'm going to it's gone. Uh, send this cow back to the farm. And then I'm going to <laughs> attempt Mystic Shield with the Glockhen. Doesn't seem to have a whole lot of other options since Plague Squall is reduced in range so much. So this is going to be cast on a 6. Uh, I fail that. So that's going to conclude the Magikin of Nurgle hero phase. So the Magikin of Nurgle movement phase, I need to be pretty aggressive here. So first, these Blight Kings are just going to move up their super cool four inches. Hopefully they can roll something mighty. These Blight Kings are going to be a little bit uh, more impressive. They can run and charge if they're within seven inches of the Feculent Narlma, so they're going to go ahead and run. So they're four plus two after the Sonar's Toxins. Not what I wanted. <laughs> they're going to go ahead and move six, and once again, they're close to the deadly terrain, but they are okay. That, uh, that hill doesn't come tumbling down on top of them. So after moving these Blight Kings, ugh, that is not looking good. Still in charge range. Still in charge range. The Glock in here, uh, I really need to be aggressive. I need to try and get to the surge zone as quickly as possible because for, for me to win the scenario, I have to do 20 wounds to the Herdstone. So even if this seems too gutsy right now, I think the Glock is just going to have to uh, be a hero. And see what happens. Once again, he's oh going to roll on deadly terrain, but he is okay. And that's going to conclude. Oh, actually, we have to conclude the wound phase. No, we have to see if these units finally arrive. So, for the Harbinger of Decay, he still is lost in the mist. Oh no! <laughs> the Plague Priest finally makes his way onto the battlefield. I'm going to go ahead and set him up. Shooting phase. So. I said earlier that we might be alluding to the very first game that we played, and there was a really great part in that game where the Glotkin puked on the Doombolt and melted him into nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and try that right now. With his Pestilent Torrent, I'm going to shoot that at the Doombolt, but now that we've moved into second edition, he's going to get a look out, sir, because he's within three inches of a unit of three or more models. So my three up to hit has now become a four up. Can I do it? <gasps> no. Not at all. You throw up on yourself. Good job, Kirk. Oh, I think we forgot to mention that the uh, Plague Priest, I popped him up right here. Now that we're moving to the charge phase, the, for Blood Swamp, there is an Invader Command ability that can be used once per game called the Final Charge, which uh, is kind of funny because this is going to be like the first charge, but whatever. <laughs> Any units, or friendly units that are wholly within 12 inches of him when they charge can reroll a failed charge, and then if any friendly units are within 12 inches of him at the start of the combat phase, then they can strike before anybody else. So I'm going to see if I can kind of do an always strikes first type of situation. So first I'm going to use that for one of my two command points, and now I'm going to try and charge with the Putrid Blight Kings. So they're getting plus one from their Sonorous Toxins. So first let's see if an eight makes it. I don't believe so, no. So now the almighty reroll. Uh, Nurgle. Let's see if you Bless get me. it. Come on, let's get it. No, oh, nothing. Ugh. Continuing charges. These guys, they're going to try and uh, make a pretty long charge again. They're getting plus one from Sonorous Toxins, which eight, I do not believe, is going to make it. Eight is Korn's number. What are they doing? 
And now the Glockman, <laughs> he's a lot more likely to charge, but I was hoping, uh, I was hoping for a little bit more than this. Let's not roll double ones here. Okay, that's going to be better. He's got a little bit of flexibility with his movement of nine. Let's go ahead and pause that and see where I can place it. How'd that end up? I looked at my options here, and I would be piling in uh, either two units on him over here, two units on him over here. Really would like to kill that Doombull, so we're just going to go for the Bulgore. And we're going to move into combat phase. You know what I heard? I heard that Gurk is a mountain of loathsome flesh. Yeah, now that I've completed that charge, on a 4+, plus, the Bulgore are going to take D3 mortal wounds. Which they certainly will, taking... Three more Three. wounds. Ouch. So much loathsome flesh. It's gonna go right on the drummer for his poor career choice. The component. Yeah, so this is what she was afraid of, being negative one to hit with guys that normally hit on fours. Glockin uh, is gonna roll his horrific opponent ability. So at the start of the combat phase, this is an enemy unit within seven inches. If I can roll higher than their bravery on 2d6, they're gonna be negative one to hit. They're normally bravery six, but they have the warhead banner. So now they're Bravery 7. And they are definitely oh, no. negative 1 to hit the Glock. Oh, we're scared of it. Do it to it. Let's see some combat. Yeah, so first I'm going to start with Gurk's Flailing Tentacle. He has 6 attacks right now. They're hitting on 4s. <laughs> it's wounding on a 2, though. It won't. And it's negative 2 Ren, 2 damage, so that's no, just going to go through. Next, we're going to move to Gurk's Lamprey Maw. It's going to okay. hit on a three. Uh, and now, Otto's Poison Slick Slight. This is going to be the last attack here. He's going to hit on threes. And he, normally he wounds on twos, but because of Feck and Vigor, I am wounding, or I get plus one to wound, so I'm wounding on twos. So those two go through, and they are both negative one rend. Okay, sixes. Let's see them. I got one. Make one, fail one, and for D3 damage, for three. That kills the next guy. No. <clears throat> okay, the Warherd Bloodkind gets to fight back. Um, so his debuff brings him to hitting on fives with his uh, Doom Bull, or I'm sorry, Bull Gore Great Axe. <laughs> He's not there yet. <laughs> not quite there. He's, he's aspiring. So hitting on fives. Nothing. He's not aspiring that much. <laughs> and his horn attacks are hitting on fours and fours, debuffed to fives. Nothing. Hmm. Shock phase, I'm going to use my command point and automatically pass my battle shock. Thanks, boss. Let dice roll off, Brent. Let's see if, let's see this happen. Yeah, this game is heating up. I two. A two. Two a three. Uh-oh. The cycle of corruption turns to the burgeoning. So this is what we started the game with, where any of his units within one inch of terrain on a five up, we're gonna take a mortal wound. So let's start over here with the Gorgon. He's okay. And the Bray Shaman over there. Ooh, he's gonna take a mortal wound. Oh no. And then these Bulgore hanging out in the swamp. They should know better. Nurgle loves the swamp. They're also gonna take a mortal wound. No. Cloying mist. Let's see if the cloying mist from the swamps will clear. No. <laughs> it's still cloying. Still swampy, still cloying. Now my Bray Shaman's a good old boy. He's going to try to bring that Taurus on back out. Let's see if we get it. Rogue Doggy. Oh, he's going to get it. It's coming back. But uh, Glockin, he doesn't want to take this to the face. And he won't. Oh, no. Don't get my doggy. For this hero phase, the Warherd is going to, a piece of chaos, is going to save the command point and save its, uh, um, save its summoning pool point. All right, this unit is going to move this way a little bit and try to get within charge range. <laughs> Moving through the trees, something the Glockkin could not. Could not deal. All right, we are going to try to bring this sucker down. I'm going to move the, the Doom Bull this direction just a little bit. I move my Gorgon this direction. I mean, really, this is a fair fight if it's three on three. I have three. I mean, Glockin is three models, right? <laughs> Just keep those Bulgore out of it, and we're good. And we're moving these guys up. They're uh, their normal move. Six here. Terrain for the Gorgon. He's fine. Oh. Charging with the blue unit. We're going to go six inches. They're for sure going to make it in. So that's what that mess looks like. Now we're going to move this Gorgon, see if the Gorgon can charge. 
It's gonna go six. He's gonna make it in. My six inch gauge here. Doop. And how about the doom bowl? Leaving him out of the fight. Good move. These guys, to see if they make it in. Where are they going? Anywhere they want. A Twelve, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this unit ended up charging into this group of Black Kings near Brent's, Brent's deployment zone, and we got in with this stupid rat. So let's see how that looks in combat later. The Gorgon made it in with the Glock in. The Doom Bulls sitting this one out. We have the Brown Bulls already in with the Glock in, and then the blue team over there uh, sorting out the hockey scores with Ethrak. They owe him $5. And what about uh, you have a command ability from the Doom Bull? I do. I'm going to use Slaughter's Call twice with my banked command point. Once on the Gorgon, once on the blue team. Glockin's horrific, Glock horrific opponent onto the... Oh, starting with the Gorgon. His bravery is 7, so he is okay. This Lone Bulgor is bravery 6. He's okay. And the other Bulgor are bravery 7 after their banner. Nobody is afraid of the Glockin. No, why would they be? He's surrounded by beef. Let's roll some deadly terrain for yeah. that uh, Gorgon there, since he charged over deadly terrain. He's fine. He's fine. So Brent is a jerk, and he used his command ability from Sh Shyish, or Hayish, because that's where we're playing. And he's going to put all of his attacks. Yes, yeah, so this is called Strike Quickly. If you're playing in Hish, Hayish, you get to uh, jump the queue and attack before everybody else. Shu doesn't have any command points left, and I've got one, so I'm going to be a jerk, and Girk's going to start attacking these blue bulgores, starting with Girk's flailing tentacles. Let's have it. Hitting on fours. That's hey. two of them. <laughs> and they're wounding on twos. And they're ran negative two, two damage each, so there's going to be four, four damage. damage. Let's go with Girk's Lamprame. Well, Lamprey Ma? Lamprey Ma, yeah, what am, what am I saying? Whatever. Lamprame? <laughs> Lamprame? <laughs> hits on a three, wounds on a two, and that's negative one rend. Uh oh. Try and save Let's that. On a six. Ooh, no. It's going to be D3 damage. So we're up to seven damage. Mm -hmm. And now Otto's Poison Slick Sight. He is hitting on threes. He is wounding on threes. And negative one rend. Once again. Six. Ooh, no. For D3 damage. So total this is going to be eight. eight damage onto the blue bulgur. Just how that ends up. I put uh, all the damage on the musician for his terrible career choice. The other one over there onto the banner for uh, his, um, well, he's useless now. And leaving the blood kind standing with one wound. Where's Jack? Stands alone! So the red unit oh. here? Okay. The red unit here is going to put all of their attacks into the Blight Kings. Hitting on fours, winning on threes. I'm going to try and squish them. Uh, that's a lot of fours. And winning on threes. No sixes there. Uh, so there's negative two rend on those, right? Yeah. Correct. So my six up saves. Uh oh. There's uh there's nine damage. There's nine damage. Hold on, we got some horn attacks. <laughs> yeah, too. yeah. Um, so the horn attacks are hitting on fours, winning on fours. Fours. Now winning on fours. Sixes are also special. No wounds there. Nothing there. So. Let's go ahead and we will kill this guy. He's the uh, Blight Lord. He's got five wounds, and then we will uh, also kill this guy. So when I pile in, I'll be able to get Coherency back. Well, response. Yeah, so the Blight Kings are going to attack back, so he's going to pile into the closest unit, get my Coherency back, so I don't lose any guys at the end of the turn. They've got three attacks each with their Blighted weapons. They're hitting on threes, wounding on threes, no rend, one damage. But any six to hit are going to become D6 hits. Uh oh, none. <laughs> and they need threes to wound. So there's four wounds with no rend. Maybe I'll get lucky and kill a Bulgor? Nope. Nope. Just three damage. three damage on one. Fantastic. The Gorgon is going to put his attacks into the Glock Hand, starting with the Butchering Blades. Five attacks, hitting on threes, wounding on threes. Hitting on threes, warning, wounding on twos because of the buff. Threes? What is this? <laughs> wounding on twos. Oh no! Oh. Shoo. So that's one. There's a negative one rend on that? Then negative one, that's so right. And also because of the Herdstone's Entropic Lodestone ability, it's battle round three. The Glockin is within 18 inches now. He is negative one to his save. 
So I'm going to go ahead and fail that and take three damage. Three damage. All right, we're going to do the huge slab ring maw, hitting on fours. Nope. This little pri plague priest, he's still alive. So with his plague sensor, he's going to go ahead and attack the Bulgore. Two attacks, hitting on fours. Ah, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Looks like we have uh, two Bloodkind who are going to be fighting the Glockkin on their own. We should probably roll those dice together, what do you think? Two Bloodkind going into the Gorgon, or going into the Glockkin, hitting on fours. You want to kill your own Gorgon. I do want to kill my own Gorgon. Um, and wounding on threes. Sixes are special. Two out of six, you got one six. So three wounds. Hmm. And one mortal wound. Go ahead and roll your save, minus two. Oh, well actually after the uh, Entropic Lodestone... There's going to be no save on there, so that's save. going to be 9, 10 damage on the Glockkin. And they've still got their horns to attack. Yep, let's see what the horns do. Oh, and actually, I'm realizing the blue uh, Bulgors have Slaughterous Call on them, so I actually roll these separately. Oh, good point. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter for that last roll. That no. was okay. They all went through. But... Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh... The blue gore. <laughs> yeah, the blue gore. Hitting a fours. <laughs> One hit. Winning on fours. So he's winning on threes. threes. Ooh. And it's a Myrtle Wood. Well, uh, let's see if I can make my five up save. No, so there's two more, so that's 12 damage onto the Glockkin. Holy moly. <laughs> and the other one's fours. And threes, but six is a special. Nope. Uh, or fours and fours. Fours, oh, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, 12 more damage onto the Glockkin. How many does he have left? The Glockkin has been torn down to three wounds left. Mm -hmm. Now, in spite of the blue unit losing two of its models, they are immune to battle shock because they are within range of the herdstone. These blight kings cannot fail their bravery. So, start of the Magikin of Nurgle hero phase. First, the Glockin is going to heal D3 wounds, which is good because he's uh, he's he's almost he's dead. Hurting. So he's back up to five. That's <laughs> nice. I'm going to do. Uh, I've got two. Feculent Narlmaws, I'm going to generate 2d3 Contagion points, so there's f uh, 5 more, that's going to bring my total up to 10. I'm going to get a Command Point back, and I'm also going to use Virulent Discharge with these Blight Kings. So on a 6, uh, the Bulgor are going to take d3 mortal wounds, nope, and on a 6, the Blight Kings would heal d3 mortal wounds, but actually since none of these Blight Kings have been damaged, uh, we're just going to ignore that. So the Glockkin is going, they're going to cast their two spells. First is going to be Plague Squall, cast on a seven. I'm going to get that. Do you want to try and unbind that? So I get to roll three dice. And, or yes. Two. Okay. No. No, okay. So uh, for that spell, never mind, excuse me, seven dice. And for each roll of a six, I pick an enemy unit that is visible to the caster. That unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. And if you <clears> roll more than one six, you must pick a different enemy unit uh, for each set of mortal wounds. So let's go ahead and roll those seven dice and see if I can drop a bunch of uh, dirty rain all over you. Uh, absolutely none. All right. For my next spell, I'm going to use Foul Regenesis. That is also cast on a seven. I'm going to reroll this because it was cocked. Hey, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and get that and move. Move. The, um, move the wheel over to... I'm going to... I'm going to need that. I'm going to move it to six, because then when we move into turn four, I'm hoping for a double turn. I might be able to heal. The Plague Priest is going to do two things here. First, he's going to use his Plague Tomb. Once per battle in the hero phase, I pick an enemy unit within 13 inches. Until my next hero phase, I can reroll all failed wound rolls against that unit. We're going to do that on these Bulgore here. He also has a Pestilent Prayer, so he's going to attempt Wither, which is going to be plus one to wound. I get that on a 3 plus, but if I roll a, a 1, he's going to suffer a mortal wound as he gets the prayer horribly wrong. So I'm going to get plus 1 to wound against these Bulgore, and I'm re-rolling failed rolls to wound. So hopefully I'll be able to clear them out this time. The Black Kings are going to go ahead and run, and they're next to the tree so they could hopefully run and charge. So after their plus 1, that's going to give them 7 inches, and they are going to take the other terrain as well which they are going to be okay with. Shooting phase. Once again, the Glocken is going to fire the Pestilent Torrent at the Doom Bowl. So he is still hitting on threes. It would be amazing if you melt him down to nothing. It's a hit. He hits. He's going to wound on fours. 
No. No. Uh, the Vikings are going to charge since they're within seven inches of the Fecula Normal. They ram, but they can also now charge in the charge phase. They're getting plus one from their uh, Solar's Toxins. So an eight. Let's see where that can bring them. Yeah, they're going to make their way over toward the Gorgon. And they're going to take right. Deadly Terrain again. Hey, nobody's failed this so far, so... Doing good. <laughs> Start of the combat phase, the Glotkin is going to use Horrific Opponent, trying to roll over the bravery of the Gorgon, which is a 7. He's going to get that. The Gorgon is going to be negative 1 to hit, uh, just in the combat phase in general, so... Uh, against the Blight Kings, he's still negative one to hit because the Glockin, he realized, is spooky. I'm going to do that against the Doom Bolt. He is fine. The brown Gorgon is shaking in his hooves, and the blue Gorgon uh, also. So all three of these units are going to be negative one to hit. Thank you, Glockin. <clears throat> and in addition to that, I am now going to use that command point that I generated this turn and use Strike Quickly again. The Glockin is going to jump the queue. I'm going to throw all of Otto's attacks from his scythe on this brown uh, Bulgore, and then all of Girk's attacks are going to be thrown at the blue Bulgore. So here are the attacks on the blue Bulgore. I've taken a lot of damage, so Girk with his flailing tentacles only has two attacks. They hit on fours. They wound on twos. No! No! And the Lamprey Maw is going to hit on a three. No! No! The attacks from Otto's scythe. On the brown bulgore, they hit on threes. They wound on threes. Ooh, one. And negative one rend. Let's see if I can get a six out of this. Oh no! D3 damage. Okay, so he's going to put two onto two. the brown bulgore, but they are both still alive. We're going to see if the Harbinger of Decay shows up. He finally does. The Harbinger of Decay has shown up here this late in the game. He's just here to try and get me some contagion points. So after the Glockkin jumped the queue and cheated, now the uh, the Blight Kings are going to pile in. I would like to not fight the Doom Bull. So it's I'm worth gonna, it. You know what? You know, whatever. Bring in the Doom Bull. I need to bring down the Gorgon. Let's get all of the Blight Kings, except for one, into this fight. Blight Kings are attacking the Gorgon with their blighted weapons. They need threes to hit. We want lots of sixes. Very good. So each one of these is going to become D6 hits. Okay. So there's seven. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Let me grab those dice real quick. And here goes the thirteen hits. They're wounding on threes. Woohoo. Okay. So that's going to be eight wounds on the Gorgon. No Ren, so let's see if I can get my five ups here. I pass uh, one of them. <laughs> so you take seven damage as they uh, stab him in the feet. Cool. These Bulgore are going to pile in an attack. Uh, they're hitting on four, fours and winning on threes. This is for their axe attacks. Fours. Uh-oh. Yeah. I might not get to use all my rerolls and plus one wound against you. And threes. Uh, those all go away. Oh. These are not special because they're not... <laughs> Slaughter called. Right. Well, and that's unmodified sixes anyway. Yep. Okay, so they get six up save. Make one, fail one, one. so just going to take moves. three damage from there. And, and there's horn attacks now. Yeah. So, uh, these horn attacks are hitting on fours and fours. Spe uh, six is a special to wound. Fours. And fours. Uh, no sixes. Just one. Just one. Here goes a four up save. I fail it, so a whole Blight King is going to die. Let's go ahead and drop the Sonar's Toxin. Oh! These Blight Kings are fighting back. They're really upset about what happened. Sort of. They didn't get any sixes. I got <laughs> four hits. Uh, so after the Plague Priest cast all of his uh, his Pestilent Prayers, I got plus one to wound, and I've got reroll failed rolls to wound from his, uh, Let's bring his him. tome. Yeah, well, okay, that's good, because I need to reroll these. Uh -oh. There we go. Uh, four wounds with no rent. Five. <laughs> Make Enough one. to finish off that bull war. It's going to kill this guy. Oh, my career! Okay. This doom bull is within three, so he's going to pile in. <laughs> Let's go feel it. And he's going to hit you on three. Three attacks with the doom bull slaughter's axe. 
Oops. Threes. And threes, but sixes are special. No. So that's one. Uh, and you've got negative two rend on that axe, right? Yes, negative two. So again, this herd stone, uh, subtracting my roll by one, I can't make that, so I'm just going to go ahead and take that three damage. Okay. And the, ca the parade of uh, ones is going to continue with this horn's attack. It's going to hit on fours. Nice. Let's see if I can have enough. <laughs> Nice. Ooh. That's a mortal wound. Mortal wound, and then I'm going to take a five up save here after the load nope. zone. Two okay. Wounds. So, total, I've taken five wounds. Let's go ahead, kill that guy, and then throw a wound onto the Sonorous Toxin. What's going to happen here with this Plague Priest? He's still alive. So, he's going to attack the Bulgore. He's hitting on fours with his Plague Sensor. Bonk. Got a hit. He's wounding on twos now that I have, after my prayer. And that's going to be negative one rent for one damage. Ooh, I do a damage to a bulgore. Both of these blood kind are from different units, but there's nobody left on the Nurgle side to attack, so we're going to roll their attacks together, and minus one to hit because of the disgusting, wait, was the horrifying... Horf horrific opponent. Horrific opponent. You're a horrific opponent. Yeah, and I really need him to live, so... <laughs> well, let's see if we can shave some wounds off of him, uh, hitting on fives. Uh-oh. Yikes. Uh-oh. Well, that's three. Maybe you're a more horrific opponent. <laughs> well, let's hope. And wounding on two, uh, twos for one. Well, threes, because Slaughter's Call only goes for one. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah threes. Kind of less now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, well, it's going to go through. That's going to be three damage. Uh, he's got two wounds left. You could kill him with the horns. Let's you see what happens. You could kill him with the, with the horns. horns. Four, uh, fives. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. No, 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 no. Uh-oh. So... There's a mortal wound, so I have to make both of these because he has a single wound left. Well, it's a mortal wound, a regular wound, and a regular wound. Right. So after the mortal wound, then he's got a wound left. Yep. And I've normally got a four-up save. It's now down to a five-up because of this hard stone. <laughs> Here we go. You gotta make a bow. Save the Glockin. No! no! Bye-bye! And here's... Uh, okay, so maybe we should have done it... Uh, doesn't matter, you know, uh, just lesson learned, we combine those attacks. Just pick which one of these units is the one that finally slew, or killed the Glockin and then ate him. They're gonna heal D3 wounds. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter which one. We'll, we'll put it on the guy who's, uh, I'll, let me roll for it. Let's okay, just do sure, it. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, four, uh, one through, three. uh, yeah. three there. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be this guy. So he's gonna heal D3? For three. Oh, and he chows down on this disgusting <laughs> dum, 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 blob. Oh, God, it, some of it got in my mouth. <laughs> I mean, I think all, all of it got in his mouth. <laughs> that was amazing. So the Gorgon is going to go into these Blight Kings here. He's uh, down a few profiles. He's going to uh, do three attacks with his butchering blades, hitting on fours. It's normally threes, but he's debuffed. So those are both hits. Uh, wounding on threes. <laughs> what is your name? What is My it? name is Shu, hey. and I roll ones. Yeah, and you can't re-roll them. I don't re-roll um, ones. <laughs> what? I can break these cuffs! Okay, one attack from the Gorgon Slavering Maw. Hit on oh a four. My, oh my goodness. Wounds on a three. No. Oh, no. And, uh... Nah. You get to you get to try and eat somebody, though, right? I'm trying to eat somebody. I just gotta roll over a four, right? Right, well, who do you... Uh, and you... Who do you want to eat here? Do you want to... I'm going to eat this guy. Uh, is he within an inch? Because if you eat this guy, then oh. that guy can... Yeah, let me eat the banner guy. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Try. Four up. No! Oh, no! Nothing. End of uh, my turn here. There's no battle shock because the Blight Kings can't fail. Their bravery is going to be still nine over here. These Bulgor are plus two braver because of their banner, and there's two enemy units within 12 inches, so they're fine. And these Blight Kings are also fine, because again, their bravery is still uh, nine. So we're going to go to Robot, Robot Dice, Dice. Roll off. Brent, are you ready to lose the turn priority again? Uh, I've, I've lost all of them, so <laughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> oh. 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 I'm going to take... All right, let's see if the uh, fog is lifting from the battlefield. It's but finally gone. It's finally gone. We're going to try to cast a spell from the Bray Shaman on a six up. Get it. Do you have anything to dispel with anymore? I don't. All right, this Bray Shaman 
place the uh, wildfire torus uh, 12 inches away and now it's going to move 12 inches up to the Blight Kings. Oh! <laughs> oh no! It's going to do D3 mortal wounds to them. Uh, actually, I'm going to move over them. Can we do that? Because it flies. Yeah, sure. And that way I make sure to uh, make sure that you uh, pile in last. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is going to do D3 mortal wounds to them for two. Huh. Wildfire, Tor Wildfire Taurus has a uh, Inflicted any wounds on a unit, that unit fights at the end of the next combat phase after all, um, after the players have picked any other units to fight in that combat phase. So they're basically going to pile in last for this uh, next upcoming combat phase. Uh oh. Movement phase. We're going to move these guys up to get ready to charge. Want to go right into charges? Uh, yeah, let's do that. So this guy, he does. <laughs> Oh, and he's gonna have to take deadly terrain. He is. This guy. He's oh, very good. good. And he doesn't care about deadly terrain. He's, he, has, he wants the damage. <laughs> Brain him. So deadly terrain on the blue guy. Mm -hmm. He's okay. Deadly terrain on the brown guy. They're okay. This is this is really undeadly, deadly terrain. <laughs> but is. this is a I think a perfect example of. How cool this spell is, is that four units are going to pile in on these Blight Kings and attack them before they can do anything. So, uh, let's move over here. Alright, we're going to see if we can sort this combat out first. The Blood Kind is going to attack the two Blight Kings. This guy, as close to this model, has to pile into the rat. So, we'll do the banner and attacks into the rat first with his great... Uh, Slaughter's axe, the Bulgor great axe. I why do you know. hate? Why do you hate books? I don't know what it's called anymore, and I should read Roar Scrolls. So let's see what happens. So hitting on fours, one hits, and does a wound. Wound is on a three. Does not. <laughs> <laughs> That's and my then, rat laugh. What do you let's, let's do the two horns. Yeah, gouge his eyes out with your horns. No, no or not. Okay. Oh, he's We're gonna retire so... those dice for a little while. Now, what's we got? He should have been the general. What am I? Doing? Yeah, oh, yeah. He should have been. He's doing all the work. He's wearing toilet paper and he's just like shrugging off doom like attacks. All right, here we go. Three attacks into the Blight Kings. Uh oh, none of them hit. Well, that's good because the other Blight Kings aren't going to fare nearly as well. All right. So the debuffs from my Plague Priest are still in effect. So let's kill these guys. Blight Kings. Here we go. They're hitting on threes. Sixes are cool. <laughs> But there are none. I'm wounding on twos after the buffs and re-rolling failed ro wound rolls. There we go. There's four wounds. No red though. Fives. One of them. Three damage. Enough Three damage. to kill a Bulgore and put two wounds on another. Okay. First up, we will pile in with the Doom Bull. Mm -hmm. And uh, see if we can put some hurt on those guys. <laughs> Just surrounded by war herd. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened? Beast of Chaos, uh, second edition, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> That's how this is happening. It's just my dice. This is a dice game. So let's see what happens when the double attacks. Three attacks, hitting on threes, winning on threes. There we Solid. go. Very nice. Winning on threes. Let's see if I can roll over one or two. Mm. That's two. And once again, the uh, at this point, this is a 24-inch range on the Herdstone. Yeah, I'm getting no save against that, so that's just going to be six damage. And I'll wipe him out. And then here's the champion, the Blight Lord. He's got five wounds, so they're dead. And now you can attack with your horns. Great. We're going to do... Uh... Wait, I do have horns on this guy. Two attacks? Yeah, you just want to have them the Gorgon. Yeah, the, just the Gorgon The Gorgon doesn't, doesn't, doesn't have horns. So yeah. <laughs> No horn attack on that guy. So twos or it's fours. History in the uh, history of Warhammer. Yeah. Oh, very exactly. nice. And then hitting on fours, he winning can't on miss. No, just one. All right. Well, it's going to be a five up after the herdstone. Ooh, I'm going to take another damage. Put that on the standard bear. Rat time. The greatest part of my whole army. The, the plague priest misses. <laughs> Alright, this Gorgon is going to try to slap this guy into the next dimension. This is really funny, by the way, because there's three units competing here about who gets to eat the Blight Kings, and the Gorgon has uh, has been chosen to yeah. have uh, the the first plate. Yep, huge slavering maw first. Going to hit on a four. Going to wound on a three. It hits and does a mortal wound. <laughs> does D3 mortal wounds, actually, for the Gorgon. D3, here we go. Yeah. 
Uh, well, yeah, D3 damage. Okay, so there's three mortal wounds, and then what's the rend on the huge slate ring? One. Okay, one. So I'm gonna get a... Uh, am I still... am I in cover? Hey! Uh, so that's gonna put me normally at a three up, four up, herdstone, five up, okay. Let's see if I can not get chomped here. Oh, I'm super getting chopped for D6 damage. For four. Four. Uh, so, sorry, we've done three, seven damage. You have swallowed the unit of Blight Kings, and you will heal D3 wounds on the Gorgon. Let's see how much that is. For three. And they are very filling. They are very fat. <laughs> but they are very spoiled. They, uh, they went bad weeks ago. Gorgon's back up to ten. So I'm showing all these uh, nifty plague bearers in the case here, just you know, in case you want to pull some out to summon. But let's get do a rundown of the battlefield, and see what where we are with this fight. Yeah, we're looking at this now, and I was I was relying heavily on the Glotkin surviving. I know it wasn't likely, but he was uh, needed to summon a unit so I could finally get to the herd zone and start doing damage to it. I have no way uh, in the next two turns to get to the herdstone and start doing damage to it. So I think I'm gonna have to concede this was a really cool scenario. We'll talk about it in Realm Talk, but yeah. shoo. Good game, buddy. I've, I've beaten people. You have <laughs> <laughs> I've won a minor victory in the blood swamp. How do you, Brent, just real quick, what do you think of the new Beast of Chaos rules? Cooler than I think we thought they were gonna be, I think. We looked at the book a little bit, and we're just like, oh, we don't get it. Um, but just seeing it in action, like this was, this was super fun. It was, it was definitely more fun than what was last time. It was almost a <laughs> shutout. Like, like it could have been a shutout if you didn't have the cloying mist keeping your heroes from getting on the table in time, uh, because that was the hero that has the nasty debuff. So to be clear about this. Uh, that would have meant that I'm hitting on fives because I'm minus one to hit, and then re-rolling sixes. So only a natural five, mm -hmm. you know, because you know my dice. You guys all saw. Um, so that would have been really ugly if uh, Brent was playing with his, with his full army. I kind of blame the scenario for that a little bit. We chose the only scenario in the Beast of Chaos book. It was a fun scenario. I think it's, you know, it's playing on a small map like this with a four by four. Kind of hurt it. Um, I feel like it should have been like more of a. It's it's definitely geared for like uh, a big army. I think you know trying to run your elites past or fly over beastmen herds to try to go mess up their herdstone. I don't think you really had a shot to hammer through all that beef. Even if I just stood in the way, it would have been hard, you know, for you to get through. Um, so Probably particularly tough for Nurgle. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, they're good at like charging into combat, but as far as just getting across the board. Yeah, they're not super good at that. <laughs> yeah. Although your first turn, you were, you know, 24 inches of movement on your first turn was pretty sweet. Um, and, it, you know, if we had, we used the same list as we did last time, the, the, I got to change my list a little bit because I'm now able to do stuff with the Bray Shaman. Um, but uh, Brent used the same list as he did last time in our first battle report ever. And uh, thank you both for that, by the way. Mm -hmm. And, and what that meant is uh, you couldn't do things like bring um, Gaurat Spume, who would have, would have allowed you to put Blight Kings really close to the Herdstone really soon or whenever you wanted to. Not allowed. <laughs> Not allowed in this game. So, uh, again, the scenario is kind of in my favor, I think. So, real quick, what I think about the Herdstone, or not the Herdstone, but the, uh, the Beast of Chaos, is I, I don't know how I feel about how they play now. Before, they were really spiky. We're going to have to watch it again. He took was, 12 damage. There was a really spiky battle round here. Mm -hmm. But just to put it in perspective, before this book had come out, I have deleted Frost Lords on Stone Talons in one, one combat stone phase. Horns. Stone Horns. Yeah, Stone Horns. Stone, stone Talons. Stone Horns. I've uh, I just killed them in one combat phase because my dice were hot. And it was actually against a good friend. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, it's, sorry, Kelsey. The uh, <laughs> that was a really bad way to introduce you to Age of Sigmar. Um, with that in mind, we have some uh, questions that Dylan's going to read to us. Thank you, Dylan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey. Oh man, the MVP this time around would have to be uh, <laughs> the Glockin <laughs> because he. Wait, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> My model can't be your MVP. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, uh, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I I didn't feel like it was the Doom Bull. I mean, the the little guys did their work. Um, My MVP is definitely the Plague Priest because he was a hero and he didn't yes. die, and he 
use pestilent prayers and uh, he read from his pestilent tomb. And he never died. He never died. He's awesome. And Skaven are the best. So He shrugged off MVP the MVP for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have to say it's the, uh, ooh. I don't know. I like that Nurgle stuff. Um, almost everything that Nurgle has. Why are you only cool. picking one? <laughs> but I'm going to say, yeah, it's not the point. It's not the point. I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with the tar Taurus, the Wildfire Taurus. My favorite ability was the Glocken's horrific opponent. I almost saved him, maybe by, you know, making the Gorgon and both units of Bulgor, which were down to just a single model each, negative one to hit. I thought, I was like, this is this is how he lives. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you rallied and you rolled a bunch of fives to hit and tore him to pieces pretty easily. But still, I think a uh, horrific opponent, when we talked about playing this game before we played this game, she was really afraid of being negative one to hit. And it's painful. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty good on, you know, an army that hits, hits on, on force. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> The most dramatic, okay, so dramatic, inspiring, however we want to describe this. As I said, I want to talk more about this where you're like, maybe you're, you're questioning, like, hmm, how does this army go? No, this is, something in this game happened that is one of the coolest things that I could think of. You summoned a giant flaming cow that hit the Blight Kings, and then all four units that were in combat with them got to strike before they did. Granted, the two Bulgore never even got to attack, it didn't matter. But just the idea of being surrounded by Warherd is something that I would have never thought possible. And is even funnier because, I mean, this is, you know, when you were you were talking about using the Wildfire Taurus, this is exactly mm -hmm. what you intended to do with it, and it was cool to see that work. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I should have been more clever with the realm rules, like you were in using the pile and attack first, but, you know, that's something for the comment section Didn't to tell me about. Didn't save me. <laughs> <laughs> I felt real tension for you when your general wasn't coming out of the table turn after turn. Like, I'm like, come on, let's see him. Like, let's have a full game here. And he finally comes out and he's like, hello, everybody, what's going on around here? Oh, God. Are we going to do, uh, what is it? I mean, how do you describe biggest fail, biggest disappointment? Yeah, 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 we can do biggest that. Biggest loser? Biggest Arbinger loser. of decay. It's like, oh, yeah. a, I was eating. Yeah. He, uh, his, his command ability lets, or on a 5-up, the Nurgle units who are within 7 inches can shrug off wounds. And it's kind of the linchpin of this army. I mean, the Glotkin can get it, the Blight Kings can get it, and then who's the one who was carrying the Wither Stab? So all enemy units within 12 inches are negative 1 to hit. So that's super funny to me, then that he just, like, sat the battle out, and yeah, and then just showed up eventually on his, you know, his moldy <laughs> horse, and he's just like, hmm. Uh, no, that's not going well. Yeah, they just, you know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Maybe I'll bring some plague bearers. <laughs> ah, they don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think especially you know since we've always thought of this guy as like, oh, this is such a great model. To see this model fail so spectacularly mm -hmm. is awesome. That was one thing I really liked about this scenario was just to see this. Uh, I even gave him a command trait called horrifying visage and. He's just a completely not horrifying model in, uh, in this game. Yes. <laughs> or maybe just trying to be too tactical with my Doom Bowl, not getting him in combat. Um, I think it probably saved him, but... Yeah, eventually uh, he chopped up Blight King. So. He did, he did. Mm -hmm. um, but it just doesn't, it's not a feel awesome when you, you're like, oh, I'm going to keep my Doom Bowl back. <laughs> he, wouldn't, he wouldn't have stood back. He's not that cunning. Just sitting there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's grazing. He's <laughs> chewing cud. What's he doing? He's, he's got a wad of grass. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's polishing his blue ribbon that he got at the state fair. <laughs> well, you know what? Your army, Shu, your entire army gets a, a blue ribbon from the state fair uh, for, <laughs> for winning. And uh, like yes. you said, this was a, a sequel to the first battle report that we did. So they came back uh, with a new book and they rallied and they defeated their goal. Now, minor victory for the war herd. I, I think it's their first victory on the channel. No, they beat Bone. So uh, bone Splitters. Bone? Uh, yeah. I beat Bone Splitters. <laughs> you, beat, you beat Bone Splitters with them. <laughs> cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, if you have any suggestions for the channel or what you want to see next or you want to see us do things a little differently, please keep commenting down below and telling us what you think. So uh, have, a, have a look and uh, thanks for watching.